Welcome to Excel 2010 Recording Macros. I'm Trainer Laurie. Why use Excel macros? These are some of the reasons people have told me in the past why they've wanted macros. To add a graphic, to personalize a custom footer, to personalize a font style, to reformat a wor worksheet you didn't create. In fact, first you want to decide what state should Excel be in when you're creating it. And I don't mean is it Florida or Arizona. What I mean is where is the cursor and what has it done already? Uh, for example, has it already something bold or not bold? Uh, should I select a range first? Will the macros select the range? And how many steps are required in my macro? I want to think it through ahead of time. Then I want to add it to the status bar. Uh, in 2010, you can just right click on the status bar. And when you right click, it will ask, do you want to add the macro recording tool, which is great. Now don't get it confused with the new worksheet tool, but it is the macro recording tool down here. And uh, then you simply click it, and it starts the recording. The first thing it needs is some information. The first thing is a macro name, and in the name, you cannot have uh, a number first. You can use numbers, but you must have a letter as a first letter, as a first uh, symbol. And then you can use letters and numbers and underscore, but you can't use spaces, exclamation points, also known as bang notations, the star, the slashes, because that's all code. So name it uh, with no spaces. Then it asks, what shortcut key would you like? You don't necessarily want a shortcut key for every macro um, because there's not a lot of options. And, uh, but you may want to run uh, one general macro that runs maybe all the other macros uh, on a shortcut key. You can either put shift in it, which adds the uh, control shift. It makes it uppercase. Uh, because if you don't add the uppercase, you might not have too many options. Let me show you. These are shortcut keys that are already assigned, and you wouldn't want to overwrite them, I'm thinking. Uh, so, but you can see Control E is available, which is a very popular one in Word and Excel and PowerPoint, but it's not available in Excel, and that is to center your text. So it is available to use as a macro. My favorite is Control Q because it's right up next to one, and you usually wouldn't think of Q as anything else except quick. <laughs> and so I use that to run um, other macros. And then it asks, where would you like to store the macro? If you store it in this workbook, it will only be available to you in that workbook. However, if you choose from the list, you also can put it in a personal macro workbook. That means it will be available to you in any workbook in Excel. So it's stored in a different location, and it's available throughout Excel. It is a global. Uh, and so you, you have uh, just those options, either a workbook or all your workbooks. Once you've clicked OK, the only thing that you can really see that's different is the Start Recording tool becomes a Stop Recording tool, and you simply click it to stop the recording. Like I said, there's a Record and a Stop button and a Play button. It's pretty, pretty easy. Let's say that we wanted to create a macro. We wanted to call it Header. We wanted to give it a keyboard shortcut of Control-H, and we want it to move the cursor to the first row to bold and center. So the first thing we would do is come down here and click Record Macro. Then we would give it the name header. You can see, and header works. It's not used by anything else, like bold, for example. That's taken already, so we can't use that one. Um, but header isn't, and there's no spaces. There's no um, uh, symbols, so it will work. We do want it as a capital H, because control H is taken already. Uh, that's replace, if you're not familiar with that. So we want to make it capital. And we're going to store it just in this workbook. And then if we want, we can choose to put in a description to help identify it later, why we created it. However, imagine if the macro is supposed to move the cursor to the first row, wouldn't it make sense to figure out, where's my cursor now? Is it already um, in the first row? Then I, the macro won't be able to move it there, will it? So, uh, is the, uh, um, my, my um, toolbar my, uh, already on bold? Is it already centered? Then the macro wouldn't do it. So make sure that's what we mean by what state is Excel in. So I do not want it to be in the first row. I do not want it to be bold, and I do not want it to be centered, so that my macro will be able to do all those things. Then once I'm uh, I've done doing what I want it to do, then I come down here, and when I hover over the stop recording, it'll tell me, click here to stop recording, and you click, you're done. It's a good idea to keep it simple, sweetheart. In other words, kiss. Uh, for example, this was um, a workbook that I created for a client. Each of these was a macro. I had to delete blank rows. 
I had to insert blank columns, and I went through, and frankly, I had to figure these out as I went along. I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do, but I wanted to make it look like an access spreadsheet or an access table so that I could import it easily into access. And every time I did something, I realized I had to do something more to it. Well, if I had created one big macro that did all these things, I would have had to re-record it over and over and over again. But uh, because I knew to keep it simple, I created each one as its own macro, and then I could add and delete and change the order more easily. And then finally, after all seven of the, the little macros were done, then I made a final macro that would make all the previous macros work in order and assigned the keyboard shortcut my favorite, Control-Q, to it. Now, how do I make it work? Well, generally, you can do Control-Q or whatever your keyboard shortcut is, but you can also go into View Macros. View Macros. And you can view macros, you can record a macro there. Also, look at this. Use Relative References. That is off right now, and now it's on. So what does it mean when it turns gold like that and I say Use Relative References? Well, let's look at that. You can see the off there with no gold around it, uh, that means the macro will move the cursor to a specific location. Uh, for example, I want it to move to B17 or to a, a total reference. And so it will actually move the cursor to where I want it to go. Remember the macro we created earlier uh, moved the cursor to the first row. And so that would be appropriate to have my relative references off for that. However, there's times when you want it to just run wherever the cursor happens to be. Uh, I want it to run on A1 because I happen to be there, or G27. It's going to do it right here, wherever I happen to be. Here's a way to remember it. Bold. What is bold? Is it relative on or off? And by the way, sometimes you'll hear uh, when relative is off, referred to as absolute. Uh, that's what it used to be called, and now it's just either relative on or off. Well, bold is relative on, and I hope that's what you said, because it happens wherever you happen to place the cursor. Wherever your cursor is, you click the bold button, and it bolds whatever you happen to be on. So here's a way to remember it. My gold, my bold gold relatives own the pool. See, you see this, this, uh, you see the gold around the picture of the pool? Well, I think that this looks like a pool. For some reason, those look like little tiles, and I think of it as a pool. So if it's gold, then it must be like bold, and that means that it happens wherever I put it, just like bold. So that might help you remember it. My bold gold relatives own the pool. A great way to play your uh, macros also right on the custom uh, quick access toolbar. If you click the drop down arrow next to it, it will uh, go into quick access toolbar and then choose from these commands from macros and you find the macro that you want and click add and it will put it on the quick access toolbar. Problem is, is all the macros have the same icon. So if you come down here to modify, then you can actually change the button. And you can make it a pretty cool button. And you can click it right from the quick access toolbar. Any kind of a picture. You simply right, right click on it and you have the option to assign macro to it. Once you've created your macro, you have to save your workbook differently. You have to save it as a macro enabled workbook. And that has a different extension. It's S XLSM instead of X and you'll see the, uh, the exclamation point on the icon. So that tells you it is macro enabled. 
when you try to open it, you should probably get the security warning. It depends on how you have set your security warnings in the Trust Center. But in this case, I want to enable the content to make the macros work. Why would you not want your macros to be enabled? Well, unfortunately, there's bad guys out there who use macros as a virus to make things happen to your um, spreadsheet that you don't expect. But if you've created it and you've had control over it, then of course you don't have to worry about that at all and you can enable the content. Now, if you try to run the macro, uh, and you did not hit the enable content, you will get a warning saying that you won't be able to do it. You'll have to change your, um, your trust setting. Well, here are the key points about macros. Make sure you plan them out because it's a um, little more complex than uh, one or two steps, especially if you're going to do uh, seven or eight things in your workbook. Uh, KISS, make small ones. Don't make one big macro to do a whole bunch of stuff. Make a whole bunch of little macros and then uh, uh, run them all from one macro. Attach it to a button or a keystroke, or if you prefer, you can simply go into uh, View Macros and hit Play. But to make it easy for you or your users, you can always attach it. And then remember to expect a security warning, because once it has macros in there, um, it will be able to do things very quickly without your knowledge, which is exactly what we generally want to have happen. Thank you. See you next time.